Listen, um, I don't have a title for this, and we're a little bit unorganized. Fab texted me yesterday. Fab is here. What's going on, Fab? Give it up for Fab. What's right up, what's now, up? Ebro in the morning, taking over feel, the all. I feel doubt in that clap. Wait, wait, right there, wait, wait, clap. wait, wait, yeah, Fab. Scotty Beam and Fab is already arguing. Already. Man. Like, that, that clap just didn't feel right. You got to watch when you, you know what I mean, when you toasting and people is, like, looking away at the no toast. No eye contact. You know, when you getting, you accepting your go. awards and people is clapping like this, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so right. listen, I'm what we doing right now, listen, Fab, hang on. What we doing right now on Hot 9-7 is is a special holiday situation because Fab normally takes over our holiday season. There's always a tape. There's yeah. always some sort of Something, movement. You know, and we have a major, back. we have two major announcements. We're going to premiere a record in about 20 minutes. Y'all hang on for that. Mm -hmm. I don't know the name. I ain't even heard the record. This is all Fab's time. Mm -hmm. um, I need a title for this segment, though, that we're taking over. It's the Christmas All Mix Weekend on the station. But is this like the Loso, in case you ain't no so, holiday classic? Wow, is this the, a... the Fab... Holiday takeover? Is this uh, uh, Christmas time with Fab? Hot OG Christmas, man. The Hot OG Christmas? Yeah. All right, it's the Hot OG Christmas takeover with Fab. I like the title. Scotty Beam's here with us. Um, Lars Styles is gone. Rosenberg's gone, but we here. Fab Tech, so we coming to work. Um, what you trying to accomplish today, Rosenberg bro? celebrate Christmas? They go away on vacation. Oh, you know, okay. They put um, up a tree. Just, they put just, up a tree. They put up mm -hmm. a tree. Because his, his wife is uh, what, um, just like Christian or whatever. Oh, so his okay. wife is Christian. They put up a tree. But then Jews usually eat Chinese food on, on Christmas. That's mm -hmm. like a thing, right? Where? Yeah, they because so Chinese food delivers. No, no, no. Oh. Chinese food delivers oh, okay. on Christmas Day. So if you're looking to get a meal and you don't celebrate Christmas, Chinese food is always delivering. Yeah. So that's a thing. Y'all looking at me crazy. No, that's a really thing. Didn't yeah, that I didn't know that either. Yeah. Chinese spot, like they open no matter what. That's what so. I'm saying. So you got that. So Fab, this is your hour, man. Okay. So I wanted to play. Um, I wanted to talk summertime shootout with you because I think um of the of the tapes that came out around Thanksgiving. Yeah. I believe. Yours and Badu's were the best tapes. Yeah, I gotta check the Badu one. I heard a, a, a lot of. Uh, Talk about her joint too. I heard of some covers on there that she did that was yeah. really dope. Um, I I I was it, it struck interest to me just her doing a mixtape. Period. Like I've I've never I mean it was on it. iTunes. Oh, so, okay, you know what okay. I mean? It, it was, was the new generation. Yeah, mixtape. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, all right, yeah. All right, all right. Okay. Cool. And you know how she she's like a DJ. What's her DJ name? Scotty Bean. Oh, it's too long. It's too long. I don't remember. That's your idol. So I figured you would know. No, it's too long. Too long. Idol. Why do you go so far? You take it to a place. Like, I adore Scott. I mean, I adore uh, Erica Badu. I really enjoy her music, but Idol is a reach. I love her. Mm -hmm. Idol is nuts. But, mm -hmm. again, we're talking about summertime shootout. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so aggressive. Yeah. I'm not aggressive. I'm just saying, like, that you just love aggressive. to put words in my yeah, mouth. I, I and I'm like, like, let's just, let's fam, not that was do it. The start, it was the clap. It was, it Come yeah, on, she's got an attitude. No, I don't All right, have so let's, so problems. look, I want to. Scotty Bean, do you have any Wait, favorite songs? You gotta be songs? careful. People are gonna be in the comments after this. You gotta. You I know, know I know, and be... I, I love Erica Badu. I have right. nothing bad to say about it. But what I'm just, I just want to make it clear. Sounded like you were slandering I... Black Girl Magic to me. That's what it sounded. I'm like. the queen of sounded talking like about Black Girl Magic. Coming for Black Yo, Excellence. No, nah, it didn't sound this. like you was you exalting the Black Queen. Like you mm. to... You're trolling. I mean, that's what it sounds like. You're trolling. To me. No, it don't. Lenny, don't mm. shake your head. Yes. Ooh. No. All right, so anyway, Scotty Beam, let's get to some Summertime Shootout. Fab, you got a favorite two joints off Summertime Shootout? Um, I know it's hard to pick, but I have my own, but go ahead. Real one, you know, yep. that 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 Lawrence, Lauren Hill sample just screams at you. Um, Which you, you think she would have ever cleared that sample for you? Because, um, you know, she's notorious for not clearing samples. Or I, usage I heard of that, her voice. But I, I actually just had a, uh, been having some conversation with Lauren and... and, and you know, Lauren is is really cool. Like I had to even say it in the convo, like, yo, you cool as hell, Lauren. Like, you know what I'm saying? I I of course you hear stories and you know, I, I, I never had dealt with her on on that kind of level. So, you know, I wanna, you know, even to pay homage and give respect, you know, because, you know, sometimes you use people's records, they they feel a way that, you know, they weren't reached out or they were mm. you know, so I wanted to reach out uh to Lauren and I also uh during the summer, I had um, her son wanted to. Uh, her son was turning eighteen, and he had a party, and they uh, reached out to us to do his party. So you know, out of res just respect for Lauren and you know how much love, I, I, how much I love the music. You know, what I mean, I went out there and did it for them. So um, you know, coming back to the record, once I had got the beat, I was like, oh yeah, this 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 is uh, 
this is not only a dope song, but I just, you know, I just, it seemed like it was just lined up. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I had just did the party and then I had just got the beat. And so, um, when who we did put the a, beat? Who did the beat? This kid named Automatic. Right. New new guy. A lot, I work with a lot of new producers yeah. too. Like you know, what I mean, I like their energy. They they keep flooding your email with beats, and you know, what I mean, I'm a type of guy where I actually listen to it. You know, if you if you don't hear back from me, that means I didn't like it. If you get a <laughs> response back, that means yeah. you should Potential. get excited. Yeah. One thing I notice about you, oh well, notice about the mixtape is you give a lot of upcoming artists a chance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I wanted to know how does one upcoming artist like get your attention? How does how does that happen? Like I see you have Dave East on there. Yeah. Um. I I love dude. He's really good. He's yeah. a really um talented dude. I just want to know how or producers. Do you go through the emails? Do you? Yeah. I mean, usually, usually uh, it's it's through some kind of referral or something too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I I can't listen to the million rappers and the trillion producers that we have now. So who listens mostly to the beats that come through? Molly, my boy Molly. Okay. He, uh, okay, Lenny gets some stuff through. Lenny doesn't work anymore. Lenny is, huh? Huh? I remember back in the day, Lenny used to do work. I mean, Lenny used to be a foot soldier. Remember you know that? what I mean? Yeah, now I he has a gold days. office and all of that. You know, Yo, he, he does. So you telling me progress. Lenny S, famous Lenny S, uh -huh. who is responsible for amazing albums. Yes. Does not lift a finger or put his earlobe to any music any longer. That's above. Nah, I wouldn't say that's that. That's below his. I wouldn't pay grade. say any. I wouldn't say the word any. You yeah. know what I mean? It just has to be fine tuned. By the time it gets to him, it has to be oh, really great. there. Listen right. to him in the background grumbling. We don't know what you're saying <laughs> right now, bro. We just know you ain't really working. That's what we know. Yeah. <laughs> but it comes through. It um, you know, what I mean, it's filtered. It gets to me. I hear it. Um, a lot of stuff I hear. Sometimes I don't like it. I just don't. You know. I, but when I hear something, I like it. I. You know, from Dave East, I had, uh, you know, got wind of it through uh, multiple people who he was around, and I just mm -hmm. checked out his tape, and uh, it felt real, uh, it felt like real uh, classic New York, you know right. what I'm saying? Even though as, as young as he is, it's like cut from the cloth claw, of New York yeah. from before, and so that that took interest to me as well, and, uh, you know, when I got to link with dude, he was a real cool dude, and, uh, you know, so that, that went a long way right Humble, there. Humble, hardworking dude. Yep. Ready. So um, let's get to real one. Then you want to play? Oh wait, album. real one has a new person that yeah, I was just about to bring that up before you well. started. Go ahead. Um, um, her name is Jazzy. Jazzy. Yeah, yeah, I was um watching her. She like performed in a room. Yeah, and I was just listening to her. She's really great. How did you go about finding her? How did I find Jazzy? Oh, I found Jazzy through uh social media. I think she DM me, and it was just the her conversation was just like she already knew me. Mm -hmm. Like she was like, yo. When we doing a song, like just, just really, just you know what I mean. I don't want to tell a secret now. Everybody gonna come through my DM thinking that's the, uh, you know what I mean. So but Jazzy it was just something was creeping about in her. Fab's DM. Yeah, it was, yeah, I guess you could call it. Don't she let slid that turn the into DMs, a blog post. But, yeah, not that, not that kind of slide. You know what I mean? It was a safe slide. It wasn't a, you know what I mean, trying to get slid. It was slide. a respectable yeah, slide. It was a cool slide. You know what I mean? So she just just talked like we had knew each other like as artists like as mm -hmm. peers like yo when we when we work so i actually just went on her page and i just clicked on her, her thing and i heard something from that first thing i heard i liked it so i wanted to hear more and then that's when i went to her soundcloud and i listened to a couple of drinks on the soundcloud and then i actually just hit her back and she was like yo she said she was somewhere like at a concert or something and it just came up my fabulous life uh, has has to reply to something. She was like, "Oh my God!" You know what I'm saying? Like, so you know what I mean? When she told me that, told me the story, I was just like, "Yo, that's crazy!" You know, she was like, "That's the same thing I said." Yo, that's crazy. And we just linked, and uh, you know, I that was one of the first things I brought out. I played that, that joint, and she was like, "Oh yeah, this is dope." And she put it to it. I think she added a different texture and energy to the song mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, it's um, really good just to hear that. You know, artists like you give upcoming artists a chance you know what i'm saying they think oh, that it's impossible for people like him now no artists like any artist uh, big artist oh he's a big artist now. yo get out of here yo because coming up we're gonna put coming up we're gonna get into it because oh, okay. scotty beam is what yep. i call a fab doubter and there's, mm. and there's some of them here in I new york I city doubt in that clap I because um we're gonna play real one Right, and then after that, we'll play the joint with Dave East. Summertime clean. Madness. Yeah, we'll get that on. And then uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about Fab Doubt. Right. One, right. Of the, one of the best artists, greatest artists to come out of New York City in the last decade. Right. Accomplishments upon accomplishments. Right. Great tapes. He never fails us. He wrote, okay, I'll throw you under the yeah, bus. And still, cool. my water yeah, yeah, and still, you okay. have 25ers you like going. Scotty Beam that doubt the God Fab. No, I never said that. It is the Loso Holiday Classic. Wait, no. The Hot OG 
Holiday. Holiday takeover. Yeah. Every holiday season, how many years you put out a tape now? I think we about three or four in. Annual. Yeah, annually. Annual we, tape. Whether it was Soul Tape or There's No Competition. There was there, there was No Competition 3 one year. It was Soul Tape on, you know, on Christmas. It was mm. Soul Tape on Thanksgiving Gosh. one year. You're consistent. For New York. Yeah, I, I actually tapped into that little holiday thing because people are just home, you know what I'm saying? And they sitting around and they don't. most people don't have to work and, you know what I mean? So it became a ritual just to get them that take because everybody's sitting there. People want some new music. Mm. People want to zone out from their families sometimes. Some people, you know, and commute to their families, you know, they wanted to listen to music. And I just, I remember from the 90s, like everything that I was doing in the last year or so, I was tapping into like stuff. And so the 90s, the fourth quarter was a very big quarter. People used oh, to come gosh. out. They would be fighting for this December month because it was uh, uh, a big, big shopping. time for shopping. Yeah. You know what I mean? Big CDs were sold. You did big numbers. Even though January was a dramatic drop because, you know, you spent Ain't all your money. money. Ain't nobody spending no more money anymore. But that that December month was so big, it was kind of worth well, cause it. Well, because it's like if people buying stuff, mm -hmm. let's make sure my stuff is up there so people can And cop. you're out. Yeah, yeah. You, 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 people are out yeah. Even shopping for others. So it's like when you go to Target, if you see your joint on there, you know, somebody end up throwing it in the basket, even though they was there for paper towels. and mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So that's why that works. So I I, I turned that into the mixtape avenue of releasing at that time because people are sitting home. They're on their laptops. They're on their phones. And uh, it was a great time to, to you put some new music out. And, I mean, I hear you talking. I mean, that's like, that's consistency. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you're a consistent artist out of New York at a time when... People always like to talk about how New York is not present. Mm -hmm. And you consistently, as an artist over the last 15 years? I don't think New York has little spells and moments, you yeah. know what I'm saying, in the last you know, 10, 10 years. But that word that you just said, consistency, hasn't been here in a minute. So, yeah. you know what I mean? And but went, you, sir, are consistent. Yeah, me, me but it's still, I'm doubters. only one man. You yeah, know right, but despite right. the doubters, you still make sure you step out and you Here's give. Here's my thing. Wait, Scotty. Here's can, my Scotty, thing. wait. Here's my thing. Scotty, just wait a second. You keep Will you going, wait a second? And I'm, I'm ready. Because Fab always comes through with something. Okay. And then people why? doubt okay. him. Uh, doubt is extreme. I think you're an overlooked rapper. Right. I think a lot of people overlook your talent. You mm -hmm. included. Me. Um, simply because. So how can you state it and overlook it at the same time? Though? State what? You said you said I'm an overlooked rapper, but you you're said an overlooked people. Me. Included. I think that you're overlooked. Yes. And you overlook. So how him. do you overlook me if you can? No, make I don't the, over. The, I don't think. No, 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 no. I think that you're an overlooked artist. I do think that absolutely. Mm -hmm. I went to school in Atlanta. Oh, okay. Okay? Here when I we went go. to Atlanta, when I went to Atlanta, I had came over there and I was like, hey, you know, y'all listen to this new, you know, fab, whatever. Nobody was listening to fab. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What years were this? I think this New York 08. as a whole isn't really, and a lot of, as, as New York started becoming isolated a little bit, like our sound and our music was more, you know, just New York music. It wasn't being played in Atlanta or Texas or, right, you know but what I'm saying? I would also appreciate if you would come out and show people in different states mm -hmm. your New York talent. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because the songs are good. You make great hits. Everybody knows that. You make wonderful hits. Mm -hmm. But you didn't go to those, those different states to show what New York has to offer because we don't have a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We don't have a lot of talent. I mean, we have a lot of talent, but again, New Yorkers don't show a lot of love for a lot of people. That's a different story for a different day. New York mm -hmm. is, is New, New York, York City's is, jaded. It's isolated, man. It's isolated, it's jaded, it's, you know, cynical. You know, we don't always uplift our own. You know, we don't buy tickets to the show. But we constantly, we com we constantly, constantly complain. complain about us not having right. somebody Right, that's why I don't here. make any more, like, New York back records. A few times people, like, have reached out to me to do, like, I don't want to make New York back records. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't feel like that's needed. I feel like New York needs to consistently make great records. And that's stating that New York is back in, in I, itself. I think people overstate the regional desire of the consumer, mm -hmm. right? You have the industry that talks about New York. Mm -hmm. I think the consumer just wants great music. Right. They not thinking. That's what I mean. Like you, you know, need to just make records, good records yeah. that that perform in every region. 
instead of you making a New but York I mean, record. How's a New York record, New York, back, New York back record going to translate in L.A.? Nobody yeah, but even people who live in New York that go they out, they don't, they don't, that. they not, they, to them, they getting music that they like and right. their friends like and they kicking it and they having fun. Mm -hmm. You have the, the, the kind of hip hop industry of New York and the people who are fans of real rhymes and right. real bars who are like, yo, we need New York bars. We need real bars back. Mm -hmm. Um, but I think it for the, for the average person just loving music, they not thinking regionally. They just thinking, all right, who's got great songs that I like? Right. And I think a lot of people are stuck in this 90 era. Um, I understand you you appreciate 90s, but you mm -hmm. have a way of making your sound relevant. Mm -hmm. um, a lot you don't of, even like Fab no, like no, that. No, 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 but you're, you have a, re you have <laughs> a relevant sound. Spin, no, 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 I'm not doing no spin. I'm trying no to spin. be patient with no, your No, because spin. you're trying to sit there. No, long. you're trying to sit there and trying to troll and do some shit that I'm not cool with, Ebro. Like, look, I don't do man. that. Look, what ain't nobody trolling. Is, you no, doubt Fab. Yes, you doubt Fab. But I'm not going to be sitting here and thinking, oh, saying that, oh, he don't make relevant music when he makes big hits. I ain't nobody brought relevant up. Obviously. So he makes relevant music because it's Why you getting so upset? Because you keep on trying to troll me because I'm not Laura Styles, bro. What's that mean? Because you keep on sitting here trying to, like, you know, troll me. What's I'm not that mean? doing that. I want to talk about music. I can talk about music. Yeah, but you doubt Fab. Right, we have Fab dropping point. a premiere no, today, and you doubt Fab say, like just, a lot of other people. I just wanted to sit here and, and try to say and ask, like, what does it take? Like, how do you go about trying to find that relevant sound instead of stay, staying in the 90s? Because a lot of artists think that staying in the 90s is a mm -hmm. thing. Like, I'm not really trying to do either one of them. I'm not trying to, like, make a relevant sound or trying to stay in the 90s. I'm just really doing music as I see fit that I that I see is comfortable to me, what I like to, messages that I like to come across, things that I see, things that inspire me, things that, you know, are relatable to other people. That's that's what I make music on. Like when I say even bringing 90s things in, it's certain things that were going on in the 90s that are missing today, which would be brand new to a generation that wasn't around during 90s hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Like even when I did my birthday party, I called it the Platinum Party mm -hmm. because back then they used to have, that was their celebration yeah. of, it was a Platinum Party mm -hmm. because people were going Platinum then. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But now there's very few people going very Platinum. Few. So and And they just don't even have a Platinum. That was a celebration then. Like it would like, bring the plaque out, people would be there, everybody would dress up. That was the dress up party then. So that was... Kind of, we just taking little things from there and just bring it into this generation and making it fun in that state. And but you I'm being not true like, to, you being true to Fab though. Yeah. You being true to your stuff. Because I grew up and off of that, off of that music as well. So, right. but I'm not trying to, uh, really recreate, uh, something that was. I'm trying to just bring something that's missing and bring it to this generation as well. So, you know, I'm one of the few people that could bridge the gap between that because I actually kind of came in the game in the late 90s and, mm -hmm. you know, but I grew up on 90s hip hop. But I also know what's going on today, whereas I could, you know, cr cross, cross, cross the 90s to what's going on in 2015 as well. And there's not many people that, that could do that. do that. There's not many people that the kids are going to pay attention to from the from that era unless they, you know, just fans of them. And there's not many people who the 90s people would even respect to, you know, preach to, to, to give it to the younger guys. You know what I'm saying? So it, it makes the connection on, on both sides. And I just try to, in between there, do the music that I like and, um, and think that will work for me. Like, I don't try too many i do exper experiment on you know different sounds and stuff too because that's part of you know making music as well but uh i don't i don't try too many things that are out of my way i try to just do things that fit me you know what i mean right. my versatility so let's get this premiere on before i scream on scotty beam now that you're done so we're gonna okay. play we're gonna play your record then i'm gonna come back and spaz on this one right here for getting too hype and feeling herself mm -hmm. right because she's a fab daughter now she's coming for laura styles and we're gonna leave no, all no, this no. document <laughs> we're leaving all this document no, because, fry your no, ass you never, you never, no we're gonna like, fry no, your no, ass because you so listen under the shut bus. up for a second <laughs> off with your mic um we going we going to get this premiere on so tee up this premiere for All the right. people the new record is called new it's called new gambino and it's produced by Mark Henry. It's also featuring Jazzy. Mark Henry the wrestler? No. Nah. <laughs> Mark Henry the producer. The creep producer, Mark Henry. Uh, he's out of D.C., another new guy. He's been working with me. A lot, another thing I do is when producers be, uh, you know, they work with me on the mixtapes and mm -hmm. stuff like that, I also give them a shot to work on, you know, the major projects as well. Like, I don't kind of, like, B-list certain producers and, you know what I mean, let them only work on mixtapes and stuff like that. But... 
Um, that's where he came from when I was doing the mixtape, when I was doing soul tapes and stuff. Mark Henry sent me some beats, and uh, I've been working with him ever since, and he produced this joint for me. It's an uh, actual flip of Wu-Tang's uh, Wu Gambino. Yeah. So we uh, we called it New Gambino, and um, it's featuring Jazzy, who's on the real one. And um, it's a real dope record, man. I teased it a little bit on Instagram. People was feeling it a little bit, so... Let's now do it. Real thing. Yo, Juanito, we're going to have to spin this back a couple of times. Let's do it, man. It's the hot OG. Holiday. Holiday. Takeover. Takeover. It's Hot 9-7, Ebro in the morning. Scotty Beam's still mad. I'm not mad. And what I meant by I'm not Laura Styles is... It's love. It's love. No, what, I'm not, what I meant by that is because <laughs> I'm like... Of course, I'm younger. And, you know, Ebro uh, also, also thinks... How old are you? I'm 25. 25. Yeah. And, you know, Ebro... 25-year-olds make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, I make a lot of mistakes, of course. But what yeah, I'm saying is, learn. you know... Don't look at it like that, Lenny. I'm not Laura Styles, meaning, you know, you can't... Just because I'm not Laura Styles, you can't, like, joke on me or, well, or troll that? on me. Like, what is the Laura Styles? Does he, does he I do joke that to everybody. No, he doesn't, I do it to he everybody. doesn't troll Laura. He I do it to everybody. I troll Laura, too. And Rosenberg. I do yeah, it to everybody. No. You and, and by the way, Laura's check this out. Doing pretty. She got her own pop tarts. Yeah, check this out. Laura gonna feel some type of way. And I'm gonna check this out. Here's a real problem. These and this is a real thing, mm -hmm. right? It's a real thing. Back to fat. Mm -hmm. These 25ers, they got this internet thing, mm -hmm. and they really think they artists is moving. Mm -hmm. And these flashing the pan ass artists is just like you're flashing the pan ass careers when motherfuckers get thirsty too fast, mm -hmm. right? And so when I'm telling you, you doubting Fab, the reason I'm bringing it up I'm is because now we have Fab here, right? And I'm right? talking to him, and, and I'm you trying dodging to the question. I'm not dodging, dodging the question, but you want to sit there and troll on me, and you're and, dodging. and no, you're just trolling. No, you're dodging. No, you're sitting there and you're you're making it sound like I have a problem with no, Fab, and no. I don't. I would have said no, you I don't feel that way. I don't feel and like I, you have I was, a problem. No. I was never that way. The youngsters, bitch. But, like, I always felt but you're like you're a little, you're a little younger, so you might have... Like, even how you saying I never... I, I go to Atlanta a lot, so even... I may not have as many shows or many parent, appearances there as, you know, New York or the Eastern, what's the name? But I, I've been there, so even... It just could be in your, in your generation, you know, y'all... In other places too, generation and regionally, like y'all don't get the same. Like New York, they they kind of know what I do here. It's not even you know a question. But other places, they may not get it in as much doses as New York. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I could put out something here, and New York receives it way quicker and uh, uh, than Atlanta or Texas or L. A. or you know what I'm saying? And that's mm -hmm. just based on where I'm from. So I think you know people from other places, they may not get as much of a dose, but at the same time, we had an internet. We have things that people, other ways that people can get your music and get to know you through social media and right. stuff like that. So that's always a blessing in that same same. If we didn't have those things, it would be even a bigger distance. You know, people in Atlanta would really never like. I don't. When I go to Atlanta, the most I hear, I hear me when I'm there. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. Like when I go, I'm sure. Like my peoples are telling me, like, yo, they don't play that. Like when you in the club, when you there, they they play all your joints. And I see the reception when I'm there. But when you go away, you know, you're not as fresh on their mind or they don't play you all the time there. And we got another New York record today with this new Gambino. So I want to run that back right. one more time. You know, because then Cats is I'm obviously going to be on I'm that to get rid stuck of the in the 90s and oh. et cetera, et cetera. Meanwhile, they got mad artists coming out right now, new Cats, mm -hmm. that's trying to recreate that same energy. Right. But then they want to doubt Cats that's been around for a long time. It's just Young Bucks, man. They learning, man. They learning. They will. It's a tough road, man. It's a tough road. It's the hot OG takeover here, Hot 97 Fab. I got to talk to you. So Davies is on the album. So I would assume yeah. that you figure out of New York City right now, he's the he's the guy. The yeah, premier I new feel guy. His, I feel his energy is is uh is heating up. Um, I don't know. It's different. It's different times, man. It's different. Every I felt like at a time, you know, action. Bronson had his thing. Yeah, moving. Um, I feel like Joey Badass had a you know a great energy move. But this is the thing too with with the the process of how music moves now is different too. So, um. The internet has almost turned into the streets where, you know, yeah. before, you know, you heated up in the streets, it was, it was, it was felt, it was seen more where the internet, you could be hot on the internet and really not that hot in the streets, so mm -hmm. to say, like, you know what I'm saying? Or you could do, 
you could perform for those internet crowds or those events that th that they come out to but then you could walk down the street and nobody really know you you yeah. know what i'm saying so it's different in that like when i was on clue mixtapes like i would go to a mall and people would everybody mob me, had like, you it, know yeah. what i'm saying like so it was a different yeah or everybody knew it and had it where it's, it's different it's now. more scattered now it's, yeah. you know and it's that's kind of like everything right you could get content everywhere you get people claim they listen to the show all the time they only see it on youtube they never even turn on right on in the right. car you know what i'm saying right. Um, so and that's just how people get to the content. So let me ask you this of the year 2015 mm -hmm. Who you think had artist wise give me two or three artists you think had the best year 2015 um, We're gonna get on some records from New right York now. or just just in general, in general in hip-hop in general. Um, I would say future had a big year mm. um, I would even I was you know, of course, I think Drake had a great year. I would even say Meek had a big year just as all around all the things that was going on with right, him. Right. Even from the Drake beef to him um putting out and doing two hundred and number one album to the Nikki situation. Right. You know, he had a lot of things going on, you know what I'm saying? Whether they were positive or negative, him almost going to jail, all kind of all kind of things were around them. I think that's still pending, right, Scotty Bean? The Meek oh, Mill yeah, yeah, jail. Yeah. He's still um he has to chill until I think February fifth. And then they got to go back to court. Yeah, sentencing. Oh, okay. Damn. So, well, we hope that uh you know Meek that Mill is a friend right. of mine. I hope yeah. that you know it goes in a, in the right direction for him. I think he's, you know, I think he was he's he's a, he's a young artist, man, and he he's he's experiencing all of these things for the first time. He's from a from a a a, a, a young aggressive city of Philadelphia in in his in his turned him into the person that he is too and then now you know he has to make the next uh transition into now him being an artist and right. him being a, a man a father all, all of those things so you know i think if you know if you allow him enough time it, it you know what i mean sometimes you know how they say um uh, when people are institutionalized like it don't always help them you know what i'm yeah. saying like I, I don't i don't know if something like that helps meek mill you know what i'm saying like he needs time to really see what's going on and and, and live it out out here and uh not go back in there that'll turn him into uh, again like yo these people won't let me and that live. gets him all focused breaks his spirit right. you know what i mean takes takes away his you know it all it slows people down man it slows man. you know what i mean this people a lot of artists to me have, have went to jail and you know some people have you know bounced back you have tupacs and then you have people that i don't want to say nobody names but that just don't flourish after they come yeah. out and just not the same well sometimes just too much time has passed right you know what I mean? It's hard right. for them. And then on your album, on the summertime shoot, I did the plug. Yeah, that that tape had like a story to it. Right. So it was all from a story of this summer, and and Narcos came out this summer. Yeah. So the plug really was, you know, played off of Pablo Escobar right. being the ultimate plug, and that's where that came from. I went to Colombia, I shot the video out there, and you know, experiencing that whole thing. Like I, I get knee deep into stuff. So once I did that, and I was like, well, you know. Let's go to Colombia. Let's really Let's go really out there and it. see, you know, we went to Pablo's, yeah. you know, uh, uh, brother's crib, which they turned into like a Pablo uh, uh, museum. We went to different places. We went to a zoo. We took a helicopter over to a zoo and, you know, seen so the Pablo So all that stuff hippos. is still there? Still there. All that stuff is still there. I wanted to know what your studio process is like when you're making a mixtape. You know what I'm saying? Are you one of those kind of people who sits in the studio all day and I do. like lock yourself in for like days at a time? I do, man. I, I sit in the studio and even if I'm not recording, it's, it's put on, I'm putting on my thinking cap for everything that goes around it. You know what I mean? The the process and the artwork, the um, 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 how I want to, you know, how I want to release it, how I want to, you know, lay it out with the videos or anything like i put all of that together so i might be in there all day just planning on something and then towards the evening i start recording i miss a lot of like features and stuff sometimes because i'm just locked in i'm so mm -hmm. locked into my project you know what i mean if i'm just doing songs i'm not that locked in if i'm locked if i'm doing a project i'm kind of locked into that project so people will be hitting me up and sometimes i i can get it done and squeeze it in just if my mind can just knock the song out real quick but sometimes i'm completely locked in and i just can't you know just lose focus I, i'll lose focus for a minute just jumping back and forth so um you know like you said i'm just really i really be in there all day like mm -hmm. and my spot is built to be really comfortable for me almost like a man cave so i really is that the crib no nah, it's not at the crib it's at this little spot but it's built 
like like it's like the you house. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really. You know and speaking about like features, what was the hardest? Like, who was the hardest to get as a feature, ever? Ever? Hmm. I don't know. I I mean, anybody that was hard, I guess it either didn't happen, or what anybody that happened, I don't think it was too too. There's records that's been um like you've had to jump through a few loops to uh, political loops. pull it all yeah, yeah you know clearances and stuff like that but no but none of the features have actually because you're not hard. you're not chasing nobody like you're gonna ask not ask really, again yeah, i ask you know i put out there sometimes people are busy and you get the get the running and stuff too and i think sometimes artists forget that too people but you, you know artists are running all around they doing their projects mm-hmm. they doing you know what i mean i i, I get sometimes the same right too and have to you know start thinking about it and accept like you know sometimes I, I i like communication though even if you can't do it or you what's the name i would like if you communicate back with me i'm cool with it i just don't like to be drifted off into at sea you know like the wilson volleyball and castaway like you know what i'm saying <laughs> don't just leave me out there and, and, you know what i mean but other than that if we got communication like you know what i mean that's cool and and we can figure out for another time or something like that it's i got a couple guys that i owe records to and i feel like i owe them a record because i wasn't able to do it uh, at the time that, you know, they were trying to do something. Uh, I want to play some cuts off Summertime Shootout. Uh, I want to get into the joint with Trey and Nikki on it. Mm-hmm. Um, was that a record that you had already and was going to try to use and then was like, you know what, I can't get this cleared because of the sample and things like that? I've had that long and I couldn't uh, get it cleared. Yeah. Um, and sometimes people don't understand that, the, you know, they'll say, why is the mixtape better sometimes than the album? Like, you mm-hmm. hear that conversation a lot with tons Because there's a lot of pureness to a, a mixtape. Sometimes, yeah. you know, you don't have to go through the same... Uh, hoops and 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 obstacles with a with a mixtape you know what i'm saying you just really freely going in there and you just say what you want and do what you want and you don't have to worry about well let's get cleared or you know what i'm saying with an album it's a deeper process and Mm. procedure and fucks up the creativity sometimes yeah it does and i think sometimes too you also which could hinder your creativity or how you put together an album because you're thinking in a broader you know what i'm saying i used to think when i'm making records like i have to make a radio record i have to make a record that'll work on the West Coast. I need to make a, re- you know what I mean? That was used to be the procedure in making an album. Now I don't think that's, you know, you can be, be just be pure to your artistry and, and make what you want. But I think in those earlier times, you know, even when, you know, uh, uh, let's say the Ja Rule era, when Ja Rule had all those radio hits, you had to have a radio hit to be on the radio. Yeah. You was not making, uh, you know, these turn up, you know, uh, just strip uh, club stinky records. leg. Yeah, 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 he wasn't yeah. making those records and they were, getting making it to the radio so i remember at that time i think is when i made like so into you's and uh yeah. can't let you goes and those, and those kind of records because you had to make a record that translated to radio and then you could do your own, own thing and uh you know make street cuts and different different stuff like that but your singles had to be in that direction you know what i'm saying and so even 50 came off of that yeah. and he was singing a little girl yeah no he had to you love me now like it was he was a, trying to get that z100 right. that top 40 His content play. was a little different yeah. but he still knew he, the 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 melodic bass that you yeah. had to you know what i mean come with so yo let's get that on right now i want to play that and then i will play uh the plug too it's hebrew in the morning hot og Holiday take a, yo, I'm having problems with the title, man. Write, write it down for him, man. Write it down. For I'm him, having man. problems, man. It's hot nine seven. We had a brief convo, Fab, about things you 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 thought were great in 2015 as far as hip hop. So I want to um we got Juanito right now. We're commercial free. I want to get on um I think we got to play the Meek Drake record, Rico, as we wrap up 2015. It was a great record, and that was the start of the whole. Mm-hmm. issue if you will i think that record made it weird for me after that i never really listened to that record that much again after the beef happened I because a lot of people did it's a great record yo that, it I, changed I, I the whole feel of that record to me like i i i, I like that was one of my favorites of yeah. the other album when i first heard it but then after the beef brood i couldn't listen to them really on the same record it felt fake ignoring it, it. Felt yeah, fake. it just didn't feel right do you um is it do you think it's because of the rumor, or I guess the speculation, or even the whole what was his name, Quentin Miller? Oh, Quentin Miller. The whole thing. Did that sour for you too? The idea that Drake didn't write it. I really didn't know how that situation panned out because they, you know, Meek had accused him of that. Then the Quentin kid came back and said he didn't write it. But then there was, 
I believe it was like uh, the reference re- tracks yeah. or something. For I it. never heard the Rico reference. Did you? No, no, no. I there was the references ones. for other yeah, ten yeah. bands or oh, okay. mm-hmm. other records that was off. Uh, if you're reading this, it might be it might too late be, for you yes. or whatever it's titled. Yes. I don't really know all the facts <laughs> in it. I just know there was I forget different that things, too. different different points for both arguments. You know what I'm saying? I know, but I don't really know what was going on. It's plus Kent, Quentin Miller. I heard came out and said he doesn't write anything for Drake and. You know, him being able to be in the same room for Drake was a pleasure for him and yeah. stuff like that. Like, he just, He's not know. losing that spot. He want to co-write yeah. as much as he can. How do you feel about that, though? How do you feel about people writing rappers' rhymes? Well, it's a different, um, it's a different feeling. You know, when people write songs for people, people do write songs for people. And I, and I believed at that, I believed that Drake was a person who writes songs for people as well. Like, and, um. So I didn't know that situation, but in the in the whole sense of somebody writing songs for somebody, I understand it. Raps is also sometimes a little bit different, but we've all heard stories of different people who have wrote raps for different rappers and people accept Ghost it. Ghostwriters all the time. Yeah, I mean, people that y'all look up to as dope rappers in the game, they get lines from people and... And have you know ten artists in the studio while they're in there and creating and and you know, and it's almost like, um, like compilation kind of recording. So I don't I don't know, I I don't know where the fine line in it is because now it's been accepted that people are taking it. For me, if I heard, if somebody told me you know, uh, uh, Jay Z's uh, uh, Volume Three was written by somebody, it would it would it would be a shock to me because you know you you looked at these this talent of somebody who and it was so personal right like the way the rapping was done was very personal like you listen to some of the quentin miller references but r&b records are personal too right well no <laughs> so, but like rap is you know hove you listen to hove lyrics like you feeling like that's the first person like you're listening to a story in first person that's his experience right he's giving you that right. it's not just a love song right? right or like in the in the case of the reference tracks from quentin miller i listened to those and i was like well these are just like Turn up records. Bands, it's 50 bands. Bands. He's not really saying that. Uh, fuck it, man. Yeah. Just, just, whatever. Um, but then you listen to like a Drake 6 a.m. in New York or, right. you know, somewhere he's really, you know, or even the record when he fired back, like a back to back or somewhere he's really yeah. showing his skill set. Right. You I go, don't think okay, this somebody can write 6 a.m. kind of thing for right. you. Like that's it, even if you're talking to your person. But they are writers talented enough to write. In your perspective, mm-hmm. yes. So then, Twister was up here talking about. Right. Twister was up here talking about how much he wrote for people, you right. know, back in the Doesn't day. Doesn't the rapper sit with the ghostwriter and like talk about what he's feeling? And not order? always. Okay. Because a lot of times when people write for Dre and stuff, they're nowhere near Dre. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like they just write it, and send it <laughs> in, and you know, a lot of people have been even like you know commissioned for that. But you, you already have a moniker of Dr. Dre. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You yeah. know what you could say. You could talk six folds. You could talk what he's been through. You know yeah. some Compton, of his story. Heavy Compton. Talk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to really be there and have a conversation unless y'all are making a song in a certain direction where he wants to come to you and tell you about this. But if somebody says, yo, this is the beat and you, we want you to write a song for Dre, you pretty much know you're Dre, Dr. Dre, who Dr. Dre is. You know what I'm saying? Well, let's get these records on. It's uh the hot OG holiday takeover. I kind of like classic. I kind of like calling this a holiday classic because I know you're a sports fan, right? So the holiday classic, and annually you come around with tapes, so it's kind of like this could be... a lot of games on today, too, you know. You know what I'm saying? They they load it up a little bit. They supposed to. They supposed to. You like like the five-game joint? I'm with it. Oh, okay. I'm with all of that. I mean, you know, like you said, after a while you get tired of talking to your family. (laughs) You know, you need a... You know, if the TV's loud enough, people just stop talking to you. You know how you keep turning the volume up? One of them uncles, they like, he trying to talk over. He gets louder as the volume gets up. You're like, this thing don't go up no more? Damn. Like, he, he, he know what he doing. So, Fab, do you think, let's have, let's talk hip-hop. Um, Kendrick Lamar, 11 Grammy nominations. Mm-hmm. I think the only person to get more was Michael Jackson, right? Is that, mm-hmm. Scotty B, yeah, is that correct? And then, yeah, and he's, like, named now number one rap genius. Uh, so is that co- according that to Rap that, Genius? Oh, God, 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 God. What's what? the rap genius that lyric title or what? Yeah, 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 oh, okay. yeah. Meaning, I guess he's like the best lyricist out right According now. According to them, does does Grammy nominations make you that, or does no? Are they just... I think just lyrics, just lyrics. Oh, no, man. but I think what he's asking you is, is rap genius is saying that's who he is, but Grammys ain't saying that. Grammys not saying that. I would. No, is rap genius still saying that because of the 
Yeah, that's what I don't, I'm, that's oh no, what I'm no, no! To I don't oh, think okay. so. I don't think so. I oh, think right. they just uh, just named him number one rap genius today. I think Kendrick Lamar is a, a great lyricist overall. You know, I think he paints uh, uh, integrity in his raps. I think he 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 speaks on a message, but at the same time makes it not a, as dull as somebody who has spoken in the same space as he has. It's not over before. preachy. Yeah, it's not over preachy. It still has some. Uh, melody to it. He changes his voice in, in almost a. Uh, please don't take this th- wrong, but you know how Nicki Minaj changes yeah. her voice in. Or Andre flows. 3000 right. too will change his shit too. So, you know, I think he has a couple different voices that he gives it to you in, and, and you know, it, it, it makes it, it keeps it exciting. Adds it keeps personality. It, right. What who, what artist makes Fab step his game up? Who do you hear that's like, right, I need to. I, I need to redo this not, line. This shit ain't all, this shit ain't tight enough. Let me tighten my game up. It's not always um, a certain artist. I I I'm I'm now making trying to make great songs. So when I hear great songs, I don't care if it's a hip hop artist. I don't care if it's Adele. If it's you know when you hear great songs, you be mm. like, wow, man, I want to. You know, I want to make great songs that touch people, or people relate to them, or people party to them, or people cry to them or how whatever emotion that people attach to those songs that's what the goals are for me now it's not just you know i i can rap i can make put lines together i can put current events in rap so i can you know flip something that i've said a hundred times and keep flipping it in a different metaphor like you know what i'm saying so but songs is really now the challenge really you know being able to do all those things that i said i could do but put up put it in a good song where she says you know she can classify that as you know he makes hits but you know you gotta really connect with people with your song you said she as in scotty beam yeah scotty mm-hmm. beam said, making she, sure scotty beam accepts that. your bar yeah she, she said i make hits you know scotty I mean? beam out here got fab stepping his game up i mean that's who that's who you gotta you know you gotta inspire the doubters please. yeah the you know doubters, what i mean the, the people who doubters. know you know, you got to appreciate the people you know, but you aiming for the people that doubt. You know what I mean? You have to aim for them. It keeps you sharp, my mm-hmm. G. You know, it keeps you that's sharp. Who, that's why I sharpen my blade for, the Scotty B's of the world. <laughs> that's what I do it for. Yo, so Fab, um, today, well, it's Christmas Eve, but um, yeah, tomorrow is supposed to be a big day. Yeah, I was supposed to drop the Young OG Project 2 on Christmas, but um, I needed some more clearance time. Samples. My samples weren't clearing in time. Mm. Um, and the mixtape performed very well. Might as well let it ride. So I wanted to give it some let room it to breathe. I want to shoot some videos off it. Um, I'm going to push the Young OG project back to February mm. and uh, use January to promote to, into February. Um, you really don't. You really don't uh, notice how close Thanksgiving and Christmas are until you... Until <laughs> <laughs> you're doing it, right? Yeah, until you actually, like, live it. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, that, I was I was content with doing it because I felt like, you know, you could just double up on music, and I still wanted my Christmas date. But then I saw, like, you know, the, some other factors, you know, the, the thing I wanted to... I didn't want it, the tape to get smothered by the Young OG project mm-hmm. or have to just devote all my energy and time to Young OG. So we pushed it back... And it's really themed this time. Last time I kind of themed it over 90s hip hop and like it was inspired by that. But this time it's inspired by 90s R&B. So I wanted to get people into that wave uh, by coming in February. I just needed time to get people into that wave. I don't. I think the mixtape just coming in Thanksgiving and then this would have came Friday. It would have. It would have squashed the tape, time. and the tape is the tape is mean. Right. Of the tapes that came out, I'm telling you, this is my favorite tape. Right, straight Thank up. You. There was a lot of there was a lot of bricks mm-hmm. that dropped on that. Because I think people I mean? was trying to just take advantage of the holiday thing that I like exploited, but not saying I'm just the the the, the one no, who figured it, it, say it you know say it. figured the DaVinci Talk code your or shit, something, Fab. But, Talk your shit. I just think people just wanted to take advantage of it. You know what I mean? Like, like this. Let's throw out a tape, but no. You was nobody, trying to see Fab on the holiday fall back. Together. The holiday is Fab's, is what he's saying. When he comes so, around the holiday season, everybody just fall back because this so shit is gonna words. be consistent. And so many words. Or if you're gonna do it, just do it. Do it for real. Like you can't, don't play. Don't, don't, don't yeah, play don't around. Play we it. ain't got time, cuz. Is right. what he's how saying. Can, how can they be playing with it? Like, what does that mean? Playing with it means like you just. Slop something together or put something together, and and there's and, no theme, there's it. no cohesiveness, yeah. there's no. I think you know, do that with your tapes. Make them make sure that you 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 putting it together for real. Don't 
you know, no disrespect to anybody who put out projects on them, but every time you putting out a project, this is a representation of you and your music and your brand. So you got to put put it put it out for real. Like, you know, don't look at it like, oh, I'm just throwing out a table. I think people put too much shit on there, too. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, um, there could be a lot of great music. Like, I listened to Chris Brown's tape that he came out with. There's a lot of great music on there, but it was 35 joints. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't, at a certain point, I started getting lost. Yeah, the game's joint, too. The game had great shit on his album, right? But it was... It's hard. Mm-hmm. Like, you go through and you find a couple, and then, like, you try to go back and find right. some other ones. And this ain't the 90s where you had time to sit and listen to right. 30 songs right, straight. Right, so right. now you got so much other to do. Social media is popping. You can't stop scrolling on your phone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Things is going on. The yeah. kids are screaming. Every, everything is going on. Right. And, and you got to try to hit, thir- even in a driving sense, like, it's hard to listen to 30 songs straight. Well, so. it's hard to fall in love, too, because, you know, you're getting, you know, you're getting hit with so much information, right? right. It's like, it's like anything when you get hit with so much shit off the top you be like yeah, wait hold on slow down slow down slow down you mm-hmm. know what i mean um so look fat um this tape or the album that you have coming in february you said 90s r&b inspired mm-hmm. and clearance issues yeah any 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 uh information collabos what well, samples are you using that we can look forward to did you chop something differently i don't i don't want to i don't want to give them that this early Okay. I don't want to give them the, the 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 details yet. I definitely um I definitely need a sample clearance time. Um I used a lot of again new energy. Mm. I used a few uh people that weren't new energy but it, it it'll feel new from you hearing them, you know, with me as well. You know what I'm saying? I I always like, you know, different collaborations. I don't like to abuse a collaboration. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I like to, you know, spread it out a little bit sometimes if if it is somebody that we do records with a lot uh, and i like new collaborations i think everybody likes new co- i think when you see it on paper it makes you be like oh what's this what's what's fab and anthony hamilton sound like mm. you know what i'm saying like i i, I like that kind of you tell him he just told it anyway right just a i don't want to tell him but i'm just tell a little him. bit you know what i mean sorry not sorry right <laughs> But um, you know what I want to go back to too the two 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 moments that we, we was talking about twenty fifteen moments, um, where the nineties thing uh, uh came from with the R and B was my birthday party, and um at the party we had um a lot of the artists from the nineties mm-hmm. and you know Bad Boy and um you know Case was there Faith Case mm. One Twelve uh uh who am I forget Horace Brown uh Lil Mo yeah. Uh, you know that energy that we had at the party. You know, I me. Mean? I wanted to do that because, of course, because we were doing the platinum party thing. But I wanted that feeling of '90s R&B. You know, you never seen those like memes and people say like, if it ain't you mean memes, ni- yeah, memes or meme. No, it's a it meme. It's, it's a, a meme, meme, not a meme. But it's spelt meme though. Yes, right? it is. But okay. it's a meme. All right, it's a meme. I, I don't know. <laughs> so. <laughs> I see those memes where it says if it's not destroy you in the comments for that. You I don't this, care. This like destruction is sound. Yeah, destroy me for you know. Memes. People say memes though. I they do. Heard, that's yeah. another thing too. I've heard people say it, so I that's heard why some I, newscasters say like, yeah, with the memes, and I'm like, I've memes. heard it, so that's why I never was. <laughs> nobody corrected me. Everybody yeah, just yeah. yo, you gotta, gotta check tomato, the people tomato. around you. You gotta check the people around you. They not. I mean, you just said one second ago. <laughs> Anyway, there was memes that say, uh, if it ain't 90s R&B love, I don't want it. Whereas mm. R&B in that time was a different feeling. It was a different connection. It was less, uh, like, turn up R&B. It was more like, you know, singing. And, and I saw that at the party where people connected to those songs. These are people that were 25 that were her age or, you know, even younger, you know, singing these 112 songs because, yeah. the you know, singing and music so they're connects. Yeah, they're timeless records, you know what I'm yeah. saying? So I wanted to just spin that back around and, you know, February seemed cool too because of, you know, it's, it's Valentine's time and, you know, R&B and Valentine's, they, they, they live in the same world. So, you know what I mean? It's just a lot of things that... Uh, Made, made sense for it to come in February instead of, you know, rushing it for Christmas Day. So we might as well get on a classic fab with Lil Mo, since yeah. you're talking R&B vibes. Yeah, I might got a lot well. of little R&B remixes. You, so you want to go down that lane if you want. Uh, what's your you favorite? Other than the Lil Mo to everybody. Loves. I gotta say Lil Mo, though, because that was like my first, uh, you know, that was like my introduction to, you know what I'm saying? That was yeah. before people even knew what I looked like at first, you know what I'm saying? Where I'm still, people are saying, yo, I love this kid fab, and I'm like, 
I'm fab though. Like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like trying to explain it. It's me. <laughs> And and people love the song, and and I got to see genuine opinions before you know people are in your face, you know what I mean doubters that you know was doubting when they were in the other room, mm -hmm. but now they, <laughs> they, they they you know what I'm saying so I got to see those genuine reactions yeah. before people knew who I was. So I, I always and and little Mo too, uh, uh, one key thing about the little Mo collab was that at that time too little Mo was hot, so. A lot of people were pressuring her to, you know, try to get Jay Z because she was on a Jay Z hook. She was on Ja Rule's records, and they were telling her to get those people. And she was fighting like, Nah, I want to use this kid from this Clue mixtape. Like, yo, yeah. he's being crazy. I want to use this kid. And they were trying to talk her out of it. Like, Nah, man. Like, get one of these guys. Like, this is your first single. You want, you want to take off? And she was like, Nah, I want it. And she kind of fought for it. They even put the record out first without me. Yeah, I remember that. Like it was Superwoman, just her alone, and then I think just for a little kick, they 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 threw the mine remix. out, and then yeah, and that one started going, and uh, and now I'm here. Let's go. Fab is here. It's the hot OG Christmas holiday Christmas Eve classic takeover <laughs> thing on Hot Nines. I can't remember the title, Scotty you, Bean. You remember? <laughs> Look, man, it's the holiday. Wait, no, let me try this again. It's the Hot OG Holiday Classic. Fab is taking over this morning on Hot 97. Ebro in the morning is here. Scotty's beam sitting in. Uh, you want to apologize to Laura Styles again for coming for her throat? I didn't come for her throat. Why you was while she's I didn't not come here? For her I'm I just can't saying. wait till she get back. I was just saying. Nice no, I was ass. just saying. Yo, these youngsters get real. You give you them a little shine, You always get me man. like Laura Styles leaves, and then you want to be mean to me. And you're not mean to Laura Styles, but you're like, she's you trying to Brady the Bledsoe. She's trying to Brady the Bledsoe, man. Yeah, you saw it. You saw it? No, you coming man. for a slot? No, never, never. I would never come from Laura Styles' slot ever. Listen, man. Ever in life. Just always remember how you get here is how you get out. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> okay, Eve, since we're um talking about doubters. <laughs> we weren't talking about doubters. We were just we were talking about doubters. No, we, we were, was talking about we, thirsty. No, we were talking about doubters. We were talking about Oh, earlier on the program. Yeah, we were talking yes, about yes, hey, yes. you know, I doubted Fab, but word on the street is and what I just heard is that you doubted Fab as well at Summer Jam. Mm. That's not really how it happened. Lenny, that's not how it was. So, all right, so look, I'm going to walk doubt, you through yeah. the whole timeline. I see Fab at what concert was we at? The Trey Chris Brown? Is that Trey yep. Chris Brown standing by the soundboard? Mm -hmm. I walk over to Fab. I'm like, yo, Fab, for Summer Jam, I don't know if you're going to be ready, but I would love to do a Fab and Friends set. Mm -hmm. Fab was like, sounds pretty good, but let me really think about what that, that is. is. That was the first conversation. Because so I, didn't, I, I didn't wasn't sure fab. what kind of friends you were yeah, trying to like associate me with. Yeah. <laughs> and he's I don't like, have that many friends. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? I'm particular about who I call friends when you put fab and friends. friends right. You know what I mean? So then we had a second meeting, right, Lenny? I said, you're a gold... Uh, the gold, the gold at office, the palace the gold. or whatever that shit is. You yeah. work, you, yo. You don't even have a desk in your office, bro. Nah, he does have a desk. He does. Yeah. Have a desk. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he said, it's in the cut. The it's, it's it's blinded by the gold couch, <laughs> but it's really a desk over there. Like it's in. The so then we come back around and we start talking through what Fab and Friends would be. Right. Right. And so I gave, like I do with all artists, it's a set time. I think your set time was 25? Yeah, was, I needed a little more time. He was We've trying to there. negotiate. That's a whole thing with some gym. Negotiate for more time. Mm -hmm. um, and so then from there, you started putting together ideas, songs, artists, the whole thing. The doubt came in and whether or not, not Fab, but his co-worker, mm -hmm. Lenny S., would be able to manage the time and the guests coming in and out and mm -hmm. on and off stage. That was the doubt. But we told him if we are able to do this it will be an epic performance so we need you to work with us that's what we not against sometimes help us some some of the thing it felt like he wasn't working <laughs> with us is that true Eve? absolutely it's absolutely <laughs> true <laughs> it's absolutely true uh because i was like yo this artist yo they they notoriously late mm -hmm. they flake it's gonna fuck up everything it's gonna fuck up your time i don't know about them so what happened mm -hmm. after after did you say like yeah i ate my words no nah, what happened was they walked over to me and lenny was like yeah fucker see i told you yeah we pulled don't it ever off. doubt me again and i was off. like no nah, you did your thing we pulled it off shout out to everybody that uh that came out, Black Rob, Fat Joe, Raekwon, Method Man, Red Legendary. Man. Legendary. Uh, Mob Deep, 
Um, anybody I'm leaving off. Some Mace. people say the best set at Summer Jam. Easy. Yeah. yeah, it was. It was. It was really like I enjoyed myself, and it was my set. Like I was just there, like you know, feeling really feeling like it was going good. The crowd was into it, everything. They it was it was a moment, and that's what I was been trying to every, for the last couple Summer Jams that I I've been a part of. I wanted to make my set a moment. It wasn't just about me. I've done Summer Jam a few mm. times. So, you know, I I look back at some of the guys who had classic Summer summer Jam. It, it, it was about moments, you know what I'm saying? When, you know, Jay did the screen thing or he brought Michael Jackson out or, you know, I think that's why even Nas was so mad at Hot when he, because he, it kind y'all kind of took a moment from yeah. him. not to bring back a bad negative nah, time, nah, but, but it was a, it was that, that that was his moment and y'all like you know lynching a man on stage. Yeah, was that's like, a different kind we of. We was moment. like, yeah. yo, hang on, wait, wait where's this? <laughs> wait, we're gonna lynch a person? <laughs> yeah, so it, it's about the moments, man. <laughs> Hold on, fam. Nah, there's sometimes too where the, the moments are lost. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to create a moment, it doesn't happen, or something becomes a moment. And for the youngsters that don't know that history, yeah. um, in 2002, Nas was going to perform at Summer Jam. Things were very heated between he and Jay Z at the time. And for his Summer Jam set, he was going to lynch a lookalike Hove dog mm -hmm. statue, something. And How'd y'all get wind of it? It was like in a, well, cause we a got rehearsal a, or something? And he, yeah, we got to build it. Uh, we had to build the lynching, whatever yeah, that thing is called. Yeah, it was scary called. looking. Mm. You know, and you know, at the time, I was like, this is crazy. And the PD at the time was Tracy Clord, and She was like, yeah, nah, we not, as a corporation, going to allow a black man to get lynched on Summer Jam stage mm. for the sake of entertainment. That won't go over well Makes anywhere. Sense. Shareholder. Yeah. Like, PD, yeah, that's not... So Nas was obviously upset. And I think that's something that you could pull at your show. Like if it was just Nas, his tour show, but like uh, at at the station that summer jam. Well, yeah, well and, that, little, and that you know, and a lot of people you know don't remember that well, you know Power One O Five moment was taken. Power one oh five had just come on. This yeah. was two thousand two. Mm -hmm. And this was they had just come on March two thousand two. Mm -hmm. So this was that summer. So mm -hmm. Nas gets pissed off. Doesn't perform at Summer Jam 2002 and runs up. I think he went on Steph Lover's show, right, mm -hmm. at the time. And then starts shitting on Hot 97 and, you know, yeah. being mad at us. And obviously 105 is going to use it, okay. you know, and run right. with it at the time. But it was it was all based on those moments because yeah. you gotta have a you gotta have your moment. So Nas was trying to create his moment. He went a, maybe may have went a little too far, but that was his moment. And I looked at. You know, everybody, you know, people who've had their moments at Summer Jam, you know Michael what I mean? Michael Jackson, Jay-Z. Yeah, those those are moments. You want to, what they were, they were, they're going to outlive just being at Summer Jam. They're going to just be, you know what I mean? Yeah. Remember that time at Summer Jam, yeah. they brought this one out. You when Swiss talk about brought that. out Kanye West and they had the beat battle on right. stage. You know, there's a, are you privy to the Summer Jam crown conversations that happen after Summer Jam? Where it's mm. like the the New York City kind of hip hop hierarchy of like Hove, Swiss Beats, Mike Kaiser, Lenny S. Mm. Uh, who else is in that combo? Steve Stout. Um, there's like a conference call that's happened or a share of emails about who had the best set. Mm -hmm. You know, at Summer Jam, like everybody I, trying to outdo one another. I, I heard about them. I I don't. Yeah, you they know, don't involve you. I don't. Yeah, I, yeah. I try to even be blind to them too because I don't want that being my basis of right. trying to live up to the the whole Kaiser Well, because Hove is going to be like, yo, I'm the king. No yeah. matter what you do, yeah. you brought out That's Michael Jackson, funny, Hove. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, I brought out Mike. <laughs> That's don't top Mike. That, you know what I'm saying? That, that, and he's going to be, stay going to stand by that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, only one I was upset, but I tried to, uh, one year I tried to have the Kim Foxy reunion. Right. I think it was y'all 20th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I don't want to go into the story of what I did happen or what happened, but, um, that summer jam, the moment ended up being. It was still Papu Kim. stealing Papu's five minutes, yes. and I was so mad that that was the moment of summer jam. Like I was like, yeah, but you lead that up. That's social media. You lead that right. up to them dummies on fucking Twitter <laughs> to talk about. But if that Kendrick wasn't the what Pat else the was the moment? What, what else was the moment? Like I did, I just did, was mad that it wasn't a well, a Wu great Tang moment there. as the moment. Right, Wu but that still live outlived. Yeah, yeah. Wu Tang being there, like yeah. you know what I'm saying? That was more talked about and more. Energy was around Pap supposedly yeah, still in five still, minutes, and he really ended up in. not still in five minutes. No. And it was Kendrick he, had three minutes left. He gave his mic to Pap. Pap walked out, mm -hmm. and didn't even get. But you didn't even know though. that at the time, though, right? I seen him standing there, but I didn't know Kendrick was going to give him the microphone. I wasn't sure if Kendrick was going to bring him out. 
mm-hmm. or what the whole scenario was going to be because I think, you know, ASAP Rocky and them was there and all, yeah, they all kind of came out so. with Kendrick and all that too. So I wasn't sure how that was going to play. Right. But I wasn't going to cut the kid's mic off at the time because I was like, well, there's three minutes left on the clock plus I got to turn the stage around. It gives me a little extra time. That's the power of social media though now. Like certain like flukes or different funny things become the moment instead mm-hmm. of like Michael Jackson coming out being the moment yeah. or, you know, Kim Foxy or the set of like something happened like, you know, the year with the slow bucks thing. That yeah. that was the moment of that year. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. certain things of that like I'd rather something, you know, at that kind of show the the, the right. something a moment. Like you know what I mean? Like something a musical performance moment. Rather well, than I think it. it's the you know, you care when you care about music and you care about the culture, you hate when it gets overshadowed by um an incident. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because those are just incidents. Those right. aren't really like and a lot of times it's negative. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, mm-hmm. it's people poking fun at somebody or, mm-hmm. you know, something happened to somebody. And that's the world we live in now where it's like, you know, uh, in the face of quality, you know, it's like we had a, uh, the To Pimp a Butterfly mm-hmm. conversation versus the Drake What a Time to Be Alive versus Future Dirty Sprite 2 versus these other. And there's a lot of people who are like, yo, the, the music that Kendrick put on To Pimp a Butterfly, it's too musical. That. It's too lyrical. It's mm-hmm. too hard to listen to, right? And you start to go, wait a minute. Like, don't, I mean, look, you can like different things. If you like Dirty Sprite too, that's cool, but right. you, can, you can't, they can't delineate between the, the two forms of, you Some know. Some people can't digest that. And I think that's just a, you know, function of the world we live in is reality TV, fucking social media, blogs, blogs blah, 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 blah. There's still some interest, too. I, I think no, when I listen to Pimp, 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 like that project as a whole was a well put together project. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was it my favorite album to listen to? No. Right. I can be honest and say that, like, you know, I listened to it. I listened to it more than once, but it wasn't like something that I rode around in a car to or wasn't it because it's a different type of digestion when you when you listening to that project yeah. you know what i'm saying like i listened to it one time i was chilling i listened to it one time i was like getting dressed just to just to hear it in different forms you know what i'm saying it's not a driving album unless right. you're on a long road trip it's not like a driving through the city album it's a it's a sitting at the crib album it's a you Reflect. know what i mean sunday morning album it's a yeah. mm-hmm. you know as albums go it was easily uh, i mean in hip hop it was easily my favorite album of 2015 as far as a cohesive project right right the other projects that came out in 2015 i like a lot of songs on those albums but as a cohesive project right. you know like what a time to be alive is a collection of songs mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying it's mm-hmm. exactly what the title is and it's, it's fun it's great this is awesome what right. a time to be alive right. boom mm-hmm. you know um if you're reading this is probably too late is a collection of songs it was a tape like mm-hmm. you put it out as a mixtape mm-hmm. um dirty sprite too you know i can't listen to f- entire future albums you Why? know what i'm saying i like certain songs mm-hmm. because i think too much of it starts to sound the same to me mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying but mm-hmm. i like future's talent and i like future songs but as a body of work you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. Um, same with Meek Mill. A lot of great songs on there, but as a cohesive project, I like um, the uh, Dreams and Nightmares, the first one. Right. You know, as a cohesive project, I and I like Kendrick some of Meek's puts tapes. together good projects though, like yeah. as as a whole. When I, I saw that from even the um, the mixtapes, the like Section Eighty, and yeah. you know, those are I could listen to them. So when I heard those, I was like, well, when he get to the album time, like he's gonna have a whole project, like yeah. Good Kid, Mad City. That was. And then I knew he was over there with Dre, who comes from that whole chronic and Sequence in the, the, album. the skits yeah, and all yeah, of that. Yeah. So I knew that, you know, I'm like, yo, this first project has got it. It would be a letdown if it went from Section 80 to not a good project that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, I, I didn't expect anything less from him. So I think overall he definitely makes great projects as a whole. Yo, look, Fab, it was good talking to you today, man. What do you it's do for the holidays? You, what happens in the Fab household? Because, you know, people try to get into your private life. Mm-hmm. You do a great job of curving blogs and mm-hmm. making sure that your family and your lady and your kids and your your situation is Yeah, because that's firm. not really what I'm here to entertain. I know social media has opened that doorway, yeah. like with people, you know, showing, but I'm, I'm really here to make music and entertain through music. You know, certain things I share, you know what I'm saying, it's part of my life, it's part of who I am, but I'm not here to entertain y'all with my personal life, really. So, you know what I mean? I, I, I and On Christmas, I do family shit like you know I, I, is it a, well because you know some families do christmas eve they open the gifts on christmas eve they eat on christmas eve and christmas mm-hmm. day is kind of like a a sit around do nothing day mm-hmm. some people 
open the gifts on Christmas Day and have the, you know what I mean? Like some yeah. people go to church on Christmas Eve and, and get, you know, I don't, what's the fab? Well, we just open the gifts on Christmas. I, I think, you know, we don't, uh, we have like Christmas Eve, we, we, we chill and do things together as a family, but we don't really open any. I know sometimes people open, like you said, they open up one yeah, gift yeah, for something yeah. and then wait till the next day. We kind of just tradi- do it traditionally and just open up the gifts on Christmas. Some of my family still comes over, friends start coming over on Christmas Day and, you know, uh, exchange gifts and open gifts and, you know, watch the games. What's your you know? son, what'd you get for your son, your oldest? This year? Yeah, what do you want? Um, he's he's obsessed with wrestling right now. So he been upset. He he tried to take Rosenberg out. We was at yeah. we was at some show. Yeah, he saw Rosenberg try to take him out. Yeah, he's he's, he he's gonna he's gonna jump on Rosenberg every time he sees him because he just knows he's in his wrestling world. Yeah. And, you know what I mean. So it's, that's a funny world. Like I I haven't been involved in wrestling since I was a little <laughs> yeah. boy. So like. You know, going there and seeing like it's still a lot of adults that are involved. I went to when Wale was <laughs> like, he, I was just like, yo, yo, what? Wale's hard body with the wrestling. No, the funniest one is there was a kid when we was growing up that was infatuated with wrestling, and I went to took my son to the Barclays to see SummerSlam or something in, in this summer, and I just hear somebody calling me, and I turn around and it's the kid from when I was a kid. I was like, yo, you still going to these shits? Like, what are you doing here? And he still goes. He's like, you know this is my shit. Like, man, you know I'm in here. So it, it was just funny, man. But my son loves it, so we got him a lot of wrestling thing. We actually did his room over where it's gonna, his bed is going to be a wrestling ring. I just set myself up for wrestling <laughs> matches for, you know, the nonstop, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, so we did his room over, and it's like a wrestling ring, and the walls are going to be the crowd, and, you know, he's he's going to be ecstatic. So man. that's his big gift. Yeah, that's his, that's that's going to be his big gift. We get, I'm getting him other little things Got that it. I think he needs in his life. You know what <laughs> I mean? But that's a what's going to be. He's going to be worried Let's about. work like, on his penmanship. He may never leave saying? that room again. Like, he's just going to be in there yeah. locked in, man. But so it's, I, that's and, what it's about, though. And I think you just it's about had a, kids. You just had a, uh, I had a little baby. He's he's uh six months. Congrats, man. So he's he's not in Christmas spirit yet. He's just still figuring it out. Still out shitting and yeah. sleeping. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, just, he's just figuring it out. He, he he don't know why these lights is all over. He's just looking around, and you know, what I mean, he's in a in a precious state right now. So you like the you like the newborn that's first six months. You know, I'm a new dad, so you know, yeah. I can have the father talk now. You know, you can. Yeah. You like the you like the newborn, or you like the toddler, or do you like the three plus? I like, Cause I you, like three plus on the being able to do things, and you know, what I'm saying hang out with that. I like either the young baby. Or three plus, what's the name? That little area in between, like the twos and what's the name? That, that like kid kinda like sixteen months and, to like three years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a that's the that's the little rough stage right there. But then once they get past then once they get like three or something. Get, but but my, my kids also have been very cool. Like I think they got that demeanor from me. Like my 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 baby, he just chill. He really will just sit there. He don't cry much at all. He sleep the whole night. Like, you know what I mean? He wakes up in the morning like an adult. Like, you know what I mean? All right, I just, he just needs something to eat, and then he chill. I might stay up, watch some TV. I might go back to sleep. Like, you know what I mean? He's, he's like a big kid, man. So they pretty chill, man. And, and I, I've been blessed to do that. I don't have to wake up and, and do anything in the middle of the night and yeah. all that kind of stuff. So I heard stories about that, so... <laughs> Yeah, nah, Did I didn't, have, I didn't like have that, that problem. I, Izzy, Izzy slept through the night. Mm. You know, she, um, at about eight weeks, mm. eight weeks old, she was starting to sleep through the night. So we just mm. kept letting it rock. And the pediatrician was like, she's getting enough calories. If you want to let her keep sleeping, don't wake up. Mm. Change the diaper in the morning. Yeah. And then we just doing that. And that's been rocking. That's my God, man. Everybody gets rest. Everybody gets sleep. Nobody's cranky the next day. <laughs> I, it's I, a beautiful I, I'm thing. I'm all for it. Yeah, yo, Fab man, congrats, man. You what are a, y'all doing for Christmas though? Before we, before I'm, we, go? I'm eating, sleeping, yeah. watching football, right. basketball. I'm spending time with my family. They're coming from Atlanta. To my mom's house. She's from no, Jersey, bro. I'm from Jersey. Jersey? Yeah. She's not from Atlanta. So you, like, I went hike. to school in Atlanta. Oh, so you got Atlanta. you got corrupted down there, and like you turned corrupted, into like not really. I mean, I'm open to all types of music, mm-hmm. except um, Fab. <laughs> I'm open to all types of music. Um, so, you know, when I was trying to put people on this certain stuff in Atlanta, you know, it was like, you don't even come out here anyway, but mm-hmm. we're not going to have this conversation. But I thought yeah, that's not... what we were supposed to have earlier, that conversation she on why you it. were like doubting. She yeah, she did it. dodge she it. it. I didn't dodge it. I just told you why. I because just I just, because I don't come out there? No, I just, I, I never was like a, a 
fab fan. When you was in Jersey? When I was a kid. Like, mm -hmm. um, what, you were out like 2002, mm -hmm. 2001, I was 11. Um, you know, you had some joints that had people shaking it up and, mm -hmm. shaking you know, it up. Harlem Shake at your wake, all that. But mm -hmm. I, you know, I just was never, I like Summertime Shootout now. Right. I will say that. But before that, I just never been a Fab fan. Cool. Never been a Fab fan. Fab Dollars is real, man. I mean, See, that wasn't that hard. Saving lives. No, you didn't have to argue and come for Laura Styles. Like I you never came for Laura Styles. Please stop saying that. <laughs> No, I did not. I never came from Laura Styles. You low key came from. No, Laura I Styles. did not. Low to the lowest of key. No, Ebro just thinks he can say <laughs> mean things to me all the time. Yo, I wasn't mean to you. Yes, no, you I can. Wasn't. You think you can always throw me somewhere like a rag? I dog. did. I did. It happened. Yes. We have it on video. Yes, but. Anyway, yeah, it was Yo, a pleasure talking to one you. One more time, New Gambinos. New Let's Gambinos. get this new record on premiere man. for Fab. Summertime Juanito shootout. That. Download that. Yeah, and then the the uh, what's the new the new project is gonna be called Young the OG. O the Young OG project too. And that's, that's coming. That's Valentine's. That's day. February Valentine's. Yo, Fab man, good talk man. Thank you, E bro. Yeah man, and Appreciate come back when time. the album drop. Bro. Appreciate your time. And too, Scotty Scotty. Bean, we gonna you know yeah. she gonna pay her respects. Yeah. I always pay my respects. I'm never disrespectful. Never been. <laughs> never been. Never yo, been. give it up for Fab, yo. Give it up. Yay. Love, love, love. Scott, you better... It's filtered. It gets to me. I hear it. Um, a lot of stuff I hear, sometimes I don't like it. I just don't, you know. I, but when I hear something, I like it. I, you know, from Dave East, I had, uh, you know, got wind of it through uh, multiple people who he was around and I just mm -hmm. checked out his tape and uh, it felt real uh it felt like real uh classic New York you know right. what I'm saying even though as as young as he is it's like cut from the cloth, cloth of New York yeah. from before and so that that took interest to me as well and uh, you know when I got to link with dude he was a real cool dude and uh you know so that that went a long way right humble, there humble hard working dude yep ready so um let's get to real one then you want to play oh wait album. real one has a new person that yeah I'm, i was just about to bring that up before you well. started go ahead um, um, her name is jazzy, jazzy. Yeah, yeah i was um watching her she like performed in a room yeah and i was just listening to her she's really great how did you go about finding her how did i find jazzy oh i found jazzy through uh social media i think she dm me and it was just the, her conversation was just like she already knew me mm -hmm. like she was like yo when we doing a song like just just really just you know what i mean i don't want to tell a secret now everybody gonna come through my dm thinking that's the uh, you know what i <laughs> so mean but Jazzy it was just something was about in her fabs dm yeah, it was yeah i guess you could call don't it don't let she that turn into DMs, a blog but, post yeah not that not that kind of slide you know what i mean it was a safe slide it wasn't a you know what i mean trying to get slid it slide. was a respectable yeah, slide it was a cool slide you know what i mean <laughs> so she just just talked like we had knew each other like as artists like as mm -hmm. peers like yo when we when we work so i actually just went on her page and i just clicked on her a thing and I heard something. Dude, I have nothing bad to say about it, but what I'm just, I just want to make it clear. Sounded like you were slandering I, black girl magic to me. That's what it sounded like. I'm the queen of sounded talking like about black girl magic. Coming for black Yo, excellence. No. Nah, it didn't sound like you was you exalting the black queen. Like you mm. You're trolling. I mean, that's what it sounds like. You're trolling. To me. No, it don't. Lenny, don't mm. shake your head. Yes. Ooh. No. All right, so anyway, Scotty Beam, let's get to some summertime shootout. Fab, you got a favorite two joints off summertime shootout? I know it's hard to pick, but I have my own. But go ahead, real one. You know, yep. that 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 Lawrence Lauren Hill sample just screams at you. Um, Which you think she would have ever cleared that sample for you? Because um, you know she's notorious for not clearing samples or I, usage I heard of that, her voice. But I, I've, I actually just had a uh, been having some conversation with Lauren, and 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 you know Lauren is is really cool. Like I had to even say it in the convo, like yo, you cool as hell, Lauren. Like you know what I'm saying? I. I of course, you hear stories, and you know I, I I never had dealt with her on on that kind of level. So you know I want to you know even to pay homage and give respect, you know, because you know sometimes you use people's records, they they feel a way that you know they weren't reached out or they were, mm. you know. So I wanted to reach out uh, to Lauren, and I also uh, during the summer I had um, her son wanted to uh, her son was turning eighteen. And he had a party, and they uh, reached out to us to do his party. So, you know, out of re just respect for Lauren and, you know, how much love, I, I, how much I love the music, you know what I mean? I went out there and did it for them. So, um, you know, coming back to the record, once I had got the beat, I was like, oh, yeah, this 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 is uh, 
this is not only a dope song, but I just, you know, I just, it seemed like it was just lined up, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Listen, um, I don't have a title for this, and we're a little bit unorganized. Fab texted me yesterday. Fab is here. What's going on, Fab? Give it up for Fab what's right up, now, up? Ebro in the morning, taking over feel, the all. I feel doubt in that clap. Wait, right wait, there, wait, clap. wait, 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 Fab. Scotty Beam and Fab is already arguing. Already. You know I mean? Like, that, that clap just didn't feel right. You got to watch when you, you know what I mean, when you toasting and people is, like, looking away at the no toast. No eye contact. You know, when you getting, you accepting your go. awards and people is clapping like this, like, you know what I'm saying? No, so right. listen, I'm what we doing right now, listen, Fab, hang on. What we doing right now on Hot 9-7 is a special holiday situation because Fab normally takes over our holiday season. There's always a tape. There's yeah. always some sort of Something, movement. You know, and we have a major, back. we have two major announcements. We're going to premiere a record in about 20 minutes. Y'all hang on for that. Mm -hmm. I don't know the name. I ain't even heard the record. This is all Fab's time. Mm -hmm. um, I need a title for this segment, though, that we're taking over. It's the Christmas All Mix Weekend on the station. But is this like the Loso, in case you ain't no so, holiday classic? Wow, is this the, a... the Fab... Holiday takeover? Is this uh, uh, Christmas time with Fab? Hot OG Christmas, man. The Hot OG Christmas. Yeah. All right, it's the Hot OG Christmas takeover with Fab. I like the title. Scotty Beam's here with us. Um, Lars Styles is gone. Rosenberg's gone, but we here. Fab Tech, so we come to work. Um, what you trying to accomplish today? Rosenberg bro? celebrate Christmas. They go away on vacation, oh, you know. Okay. They put um, up a tree. Just, they, they put just, up a tree because mm -hmm. his his wife is a what um just like Christian or whatever. Oh, so his okay. wife is Christian. They put up a tree, but then Jews usually eat Chinese food on on Christmas. That's mm -hmm. like a thing, right? Where? Yeah, they because so Chinese food delivers. No, no, no. Oh. Chinese food delivers oh, okay. on Christmas Day. So if you're looking to get a meal and you don't celebrate Christmas, Chinese food is always delivering. Yeah. So that's a thing. Y'all looking at me crazy. No, that's a I really thing. Didn't know yeah, that was a I thing. didn't know that either. Yeah. Chinese spot, like they open no matter what. That's what so. I'm saying. So you got that. So Fab, this is your hour, man. Okay. So I wanted to play. Um, I wanted to talk summertime shootout with you because I think um of the of the tapes that came out around Thanksgiving. Yeah. I believe. Yours and Badu's were the best tapes. Yeah, I gotta check the Badu one. I heard a, a, a lot of. Uh, Talk about her joint too. I heard of some covers on there that she did that was yeah. really dope. Um, I I I was it, it struck interest to me just her doing a mixtape. Period. Like I've I've never. I mean, it was heard. on iTunes. Oh, so, okay, you know what okay. I mean. It, it was, was the new generation. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, all right, yeah. All right, all right. Okay. Cool. And you know how she she's like a DJ. What's her DJ name? Scotty Bean. Oh, it's too long. It's too long. I don't remember. That's your idol. So I figured you would know. No, it's too long. Too long. Idol. Why do you go so far? You take it to a place. Like, I adore Scott. I mean, I adore uh, Erica Badu. I really enjoy her music, but Idol is a reach. I love her. Mm -hmm. Idol is nuts. But, mm -hmm. again, we're talking about summertime shootout. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> so aggressive. Yeah. I'm not aggressive. I'm just saying, like, that you just love aggressive. to put words in my yeah, mouth. I, I and I'm like, like, let's just, let's fam, not that was do it. The start, it was the clap. It was, it Come yeah, on, you know, she's got an attitude. No, I don't All right, so let's, so problems. look, I want to. Scotty Bean, do you have any Wait, favorite songs? You gotta be songs? careful. People are gonna be in the comments after this. You gotta. You I know, know I know, be... and I, I love Erica. But I had just did the party, and then I had just got the beat, and so um, when who we did put the a, beat? Who did the beat? This kid named Automatic, right. uh, new new guy. A lot, I work with a lot of new producers yeah. too. Like you know, what I mean, I like their energy. They they keep flooding your email with beats, and you know, what I mean, I'm a type of guy where I actually listen to it. You know, if you if you don't hear back from me, that means I didn't like it. If you get a, a response <laughs> back. I mean, yeah. you should Potential. get excited. Yeah. One thing I notice about you, oh, well, notice about the mixtape is you give a lot of upcoming artists a chance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I wanted to know how does it, one upcoming artist like get your attention? How does how does that happen? Like I see you have Dave East on there. Yeah. Um, I I love dude. He's really good. He's yeah. a really um talented dude. I just want to know how or producers. Do you go through the emails? Do you? Yeah, I mean, usually, usually, uh. It's it's through some kind of referral or something too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I, I I can't listen to the million rappers and the trillion producers that we have now. So who listens mostly to the beats that come through? Molly, my boy Molly. Okay. He uh, okay. Lenny gets some stuff through. Lenny doesn't work anymore. Lenny has, huh? Huh? I remember back in the day, Lenny used to do work. <laughs> I mean, Lenny used to be a foot soldier. Remember you know that? what I mean? Now Man, I he has a gold days. office and all of that. You know. Yo, he, he does. So you telling me progress. Lenny S? Famous Lenny S. Uh huh. Who is responsible for amazing albums? Yes. Does not lift a finger or put his earlobe to any music any longer. That's above. Nah, I wouldn't say that's that. That's below his. I pay wouldn't grade. say any. I wouldn't say the word any. You Got know it. what I mean? It just has to be fine tuned. By the time it gets to him, it has to be oh, really great. there. 
Let's listen to him in the background grumbling. We don't know what you're saying <laughs> right now, bro. We just know you ain't really working. That's what we know. Yeah. <laughs> but it comes through. It, um, you know, I mean, 